Today we will be explaining all curses in Jujutsu Kaisen. We will start from the weakest Rapongi curse, but in later parts of the video we will cover much stronger and more interesting curses. Number 12. Rapongi Curse Not long after being accepted into Tokyo Jujutsu High, Yuji Itadori joined a team with Megumi and a new student, Nobara. While Megumi recovered from his injuries inflicted during his previous fight, Yuji and Nobara were tasked by Gojo with clearing out an abandoned warehouse in Rapongi. It was here that they encountered a particularly nasty curse that had taken a boy hostage. This curse was remarkable not for its strength, but for its cunning and intelligence. It used the boy as a shield and was willing to kill the child to save itself. And if not for a timely surprise attack by Yuji, this situation may have turned out far worse. Number 11. Occult Club Curse The first curse that Yuji ever encountered is the one that attacked his friends in the occult club at his former school. The curse was at the school looking for one of Sukuna's fingers, which are special grade cursed objects that attract curses. This curse was physically strong and smart enough to ambush Megumi when he was not paying attention. As Megumi gets tossed around by the spirit, Yuji jumps in and rescues him. Yuji takes on the spirit, but the spirit easily overpowers him. Megumi explains to Yuji how it takes cursed energy to exercise the spirit. Yuji wonders why the spirit is after the finger, to which Megumi says that the spirit wants to eat it in order to get stronger. The curse seriously injured Megumi, to the point that he was forced to dispel his Shikigami, leaving him completely helpless. If Yuji had not eaten Sukuna's finger to gain access to cursed energy in order to fight the curse, it's likely that both he and Megumi would not have survived the encounter. Number 10. Finger Bearer Finger Bearers are a type of special grade cursed spirits that emerge from cursed wombs spawned from Sukuna's fingers. They begin as cursed wombs, where they gestate until birth. During this period, they can be seen by non-sorcerers. Once born, they can create an innate domain, a precursor to a domain expansion that warps the dimensions of its birthplace. Finger bearers possess the normal abilities of a cursed spirit, but they are incredibly powerful due to possessing one of Sukuna's fingers. So far, they are shown to be intelligent cursed spirits with a penchant for cruelty and toying with their opponents, much like Sukuna himself. During the mission to confirm and rescue any possible survivors at the juvenile detention center, Yuji and Megumi encounter a finger bearer that was born from the previously reported cursed womb. The spirit slices Itadori's left hand off before they could even react. Yuji then attempts to buy time for Megumi to rescue Nobara. Once Megumi and Nobara are out of the center, Yuji switches with Sukuna. The King of Curses initially attempts to cooperate with the Finger Bearer, but the Cursed Spirit attempts to kill him, only to get completely overpowered. Sukuna is somewhat amused by the Special Grade's efforts, but in the end, he activates his domain expansion, Malevolent Trine, and exercises the Finger Bearer, taking his finger afterward. Another Finger Bearer was encountered by Megumi in the domain of the Cursed Spirit under Yasuhashi Bridge. After exercising the Mole Curse, Megumi is surprised to find the domain still intact, whereupon the Finger Bearer emerges to confront him. However, the Finger Bearer proves to be several degrees stronger than its counterpart in the Juvenile Detention Center, thoroughly overpowering Megumi and breaking his sword, with only his Shikigami saving him from certain death. Nevertheless, the Bearer knocks out Megumi temporarily, forcing him into a corner. This leads Megumi seriously considering a last-ditch tactic, only to scrap it in favor of trying out an incomplete domain expansion. The curse is temporarily overwhelmed by the combined attacks of Megumi and Ishikigami, but is ultimately able to dispel the domain using a blast of explosive cursed energy. However, this proves to be a diversion, as the unwary finger bearer is stabbed by Divine Dog, exercising it and finally dispelling the domain. Number 9. Kichizu Kachizu is a cursed womb and the youngest brother of Choso and Esso. He and Esso serve as primary antagonists of the death painting arc. Kachizu appears much more like a curse than his humanoid brothers. He has a small face on the upper part of his head and a giant mouth just beneath it. Kachizu was sent on an errand to Yasuhachi Bridge to retrieve one of Sukuna's fingers. Once at the bridge, Kachizu enters the cursed spirit's territory and encounters Yuji, Nobara, and Megumi. Kachizu gets into a fight with Yuji, where Kachizu tries to shoot blood at Yuji, but fails. As Kachizu gets a hold of Yuji, Yuji twists himself out of the way before kicking Kachizu away. Kachizu then proclaims that Yuji is strong and that this is not fun. When Esso takes Nobara out of the territory, Kachizu decides to head out as well, with Yuji following closely behind. When Kachizu and Yuji exit the spirit's territory, they notice Esso's back and quickly apologize for having Esso become angry at them. As Esso forces Yuji and Nobara to run, Kachizu takes a shortcut and cuts the two off. He takes his chance to hit Yuji with his blood. When Esso deactivates their decay technique, Nobara uses her own body to harm the two brothers. As Kachizu is distracted by this, Yuji starts to attack him. Kachizu then gets up and goes after Nobara, but Nobara uses Black Flash to wound Kachizu. When Nobara turns her back on Kachizu, Kachizu tries to kill her, but Nobara uses Hairpin on Kachizu to kill him. Number 8. Esso 
Essa pulls Nobara out of the Cursed Spirit's domain and tells her that she may leave since the errand that the brothers have doesn't involve killing sorcerers. As Nobara is confused about what Esso's errand is, Esso says that he thought the sorcerers were sent to retrieve Sukuna's finger too. When Megumi retrieves the finger, Esso senses that the finger has exited the realm. Esso decides to head over to retrieve the finger, with Nobara following him. Nobara points out the weird way he is running, which Esso says that he has a complex about his back and that he will kill her if she sees it. Esso uses his maximum, winking technique, and starts to attack Nobara and Yuji. Esso then deactivates Decay and explains how Yuji and Nobara will die. He asks them if they wish to be killed faster, which Nobara responds by using her resonance technique on herself to inflict harm to the brothers. Esso thinks about Nobara's technique and that it won't be enough to kill him before she dies. When Yuji and Nobara switch targets, Esso thinks about the situation they are in and decides not to deactivate his technique. When Kachizu calls out Esso, he remembers what their older brother told them and deactivates his technique. When Yuji uses Black Flash to blow off Esso's arm, Esso thinks about how Yuji was able to do that even though he had reinforced his arms with cursed energy before Yuji even landed his attack. Esso then senses that Kachizu had died and apologizes to their older brother for not saving him. When a car suddenly drives past them, Esso takes his chance to get on the car and take a hostage. As the car drives away, Esso plans to heal himself and to get revenge on Yuji and Obara for killing his brother. As Esso looks over to where Kachizu is, he notices Nobara and wonders what she is doing. As Nobara uses her resonance technique on Esso's severe arm to inflict damage to Esso, Esso falls off the car and Yuji takes this chance to finally kill him. Number 7. Choso Choso is one of the cursed wombs and is ranked as the special grade cursed material. He's incarnated into a human's body and now looks like a human. The death paintings were considered harmful by the Jujutsu Society, and they were locked up in Tokyo High's secret warehouse for more than 150 years. Choso and his brothers stayed there until Kenjaku's group busted them out during the Kyoto Goodwill event. Choso mostly stayed at Kenjaku's base before the Shibuya incident. He received a vision about the death of his brothers after they were wiped out by Yuji and Nobara. He decided to avenge them by killing Yuji, so he joined the main forces of Kenjaku during the Shibuya incident arc. He fought Gojo along with other curses, but it was pretty obvious that they stood no chance against him. After Gojo finally got sealed into the prison realm, the spirits could finally make a move, and Choso started searching for Yuji. Choso found him rather quickly, and their battle started. It was a one-sided fight for the most part, with Choso being visibly stronger than Yuji. Yuji got wounded multiple times during their fight, and Choso was about to murder him, but suddenly he blanked out. He had a vision about Yuji being his brother. Choso didn't know what was happening, and he decided to run away and think about it. He left Yuji there to collect himself and move on. Later on, when Choso finally cleared his mind and figured out that he should protect Yuji as his brother, he joined the fray against Kenjaku. Sadly, he and the rest of the sorceress couldn't do anything against the ancient sorcerer. After the enemies run away, Choso stays on the spot with Yuji. Yuji says that they can't return anywhere as he killed too many people, including Choso's brothers. The latter forgave Yuji and advised him to keep going. Even though Choso was a curse, he showed many human characteristics, like his love for his brothers and also siding with Yuji, and turning on other curses in order to protect him. He's a character that many fans will grow to like in the future. Number 6. Hanami At a first glance, Hanami does not appear as intimidating or as strong as some of the other curses, but appearances can be deceiving. Hanami is easily one of the strongest curses in the series, and was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with multiple Jujutsu sorcerers at once. Hanami is the type of spirit who cares for the planet and hates humans that have been abusing it for thousands of years. He wishes to kill humans in order to sacrifice them so they can be sages to a cleaner world, controlled by spirits that will respect the Earth. Hanami is one of the special grade curses with an incredibly durable body an innate technique that controls plants, and an uncanny ability to hide his presence. He was able to take Gojo by surprise and momentarily take advantage of Yuji's vulnerability using his flower fields and a wooden monster in order to rescue Jogo. This was achievable due to a combination of Hanami's high intellect as a curse, as well as his escaping abilities and hidden presence. Gojo himself commends Hanami's ability to run away, able to evade the Six Eyes' strong perception, and even claims to find Hanami far more threatening than the straightforward Jogo. During the Kyoto Goodwill event, Hanami invades the school along with his allies. He heads over to where the students are fighting and encounters Toge. Hanami then fights Toge until they come across Megumi and Noritoshi. He then tries to attack the three, but Toge restrains him using cursed speech. The group then attacks him, but is unable to do any significant damage. He is then sent flying when Toge uses the last of his strength, but doesn't get sent far. Maki shows up, and Hanami fights against her and Megumi. As Hanami starts to get the upper hand, Yuji and Toto show up to rescue the two. He then fights Yuji, and gets injured when Yuji lands a black flash on him. Hanami continues to fight against the two, but is repeatedly harmed by their attacks. He is pushed into a corner and attempts to steal the life energy from nearby plants, but he is stopped when Gojo finally arrives. He is then hit by Gojo's hollow purple technique and is heavily wounded. However, he's able to escape, barely clinging to his life. Number 5. Dagon 
Dagon is a special grade cursed spirit with massive amounts of cursed energy, and the ability to manipulate water. While in his weaker cursed womb form, Dagon can easily dispatch numerous non-sorcerers simply by devouring them. He can cast his own domain and manifest a vast amount of water. Dagon in his fully released form is far more powerful, and he can rival the strength of his special grade allies. His strength was high enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Zenon family head, Neobito Zenon. Using his domain, Dagon can overpower a group of high-ranking Jujutsu sorcerers. Naoto, Maki, Nanami, and Megumi together could not defeat Dagon inside his domain, despite working together. When Toji enters the domain, Dagon thinks about how Toji doesn't have any cursed energy and attacks with a weak Shikigami. Tojo easily takes care of the Shikigami and attacks Dagon, causing him to wonder about the power that Toji has. Dagon attacks with more Shikigami, but again, Tojo easily dispatches them. He tries to escape, but Naobito blocks his path, and Toji takes his chance to attack and exercise Dagon. Number 4. Mahito Mahito is one of the primary antagonists of the Jujutsu Kaisen series. He is a cursed spirit allied with Pseudo Ghetto. His group's ultimate goal is the eradication of humanity and ultimately replacing the population with cursed spirits. Mahito is a sadistic, immature cursed spirit who enjoys toying with human emotions. He believes he was born from human transgression and considers himself the very manifestation of humans' hatred for each other. As such, Mahito believes that humans should be extinguished and cursed spirits should rule in their place. He is an unregistered special grade cursed spirit that eclipses the power of at least three of Sukuna's fingers. He is younger than Jogo and, as a result, is less experienced and not as powerful. Despite this, Mahito is far above what a special grade cursed spirit would normally be. He has very high intelligence and extremely dangerous curse techniques. Mihito has incredible development potential, as on multiple instances, he has developed in the middle of a battle. In episode 9, it is revealed that some high schoolers were killed by Mihito in order to garner favor with a boy named Junpei, whom they had bullied. Mihito, it turns out, killed the three kids by holding a hand to their heads, instantly causing them to distort and explode. This is the first instance in which viewers witness Mihito exhibiting his signature technique, called Idol Transfiguration. Later, Mihito encounters Gento Nanami, and the two start their fight. Eventually, Nanami escapes by burying Mihito in the rubble. This is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting fights in the anime so far, as it is the first time we got to see Nanami's and Mihito's unique powers. He later shows up during the fight between Yuji and Junpei. Mihito restrains Yuji, using his abilities to transform Junpei. Mihito laughs after Junpei dies, at which point Yuji punches him. He notices that there is something different about that punch, and realizes that Yuji can naturally injure him. Mihito then takes on Yuji, and manages to force him into the courtyard. Outside is the two fight, Nanami shows up and tries to assist Yuji. Mihito, after being attacked by both sorcerers at the same time, uses his domain expansion to trap Nanami and leaves Itadori outside of it. As he prepares to kill him, Yuji forcibly enters his territory as Sukuna and heavily injures Mihito, who manages to escape just in time. Mihito then recovers in the sewer and thinks about how powerful Sukuna is and how he will kill Yuji next. Number 3. Jogo Jogo is an immensely powerful cursed spirit. He is the most powerful of Kenjaku's group and, arguably, the most powerful true cursed spirit in the series. His might surpasses the strongest death painting and is only surpassed by vengeful cursed spirits like Sukuna and special grade sorcerers like Gojo. With his immensely dangerous curse technique and his massive cursed energy, Joko is strong enough to be acknowledged by Sukuna himself. His power is equal to 8 or 9 Sukuna fingers. Jogo has immense pride as a cursed spirit, and has a passionate hatred for humans. It is his belief that cursed spirits are the true form of humanity, as they represent the pure truths of life, such as hatred, while normal humans fake so many positive emotions. We see Jogo for the first time along with Hanami and Dagon at a restaurant. During the meeting, Jogo reveals that they plan to destroy all the humans. Jogo also asks Suguru how to defeat the sorcerers which Suguru tells them that they first need to seal Gojo, and then they need Sukuna on their side. As Jogo suggests that they just go and kill Gojo, Suguru tells them that they're not capable of doing that, and that they will need a specific seal to trap him. Later, Jogo goes on his own to attack Gojo when he is alone. Jogo throws multiple attacks at Gojo, but is shocked when he is revealed to be unharmed. As Jogo refuses to accept this, Gojo takes the chance to land multiple blows on him. He is then sent flying when Gojo simply kicks him. Jogo remembers how Suguru told him that he would die if he decides to drag Gojo into his domain. Jogo is then shocked when Gojo is completely fine, and none of his attacks seem to inflict any damage onto him. He suddenly gets trapped by Gojo's domain. As he notices that he is now capable of seeing and feeling everything, Gojo grabs him and explains how his technique works. He is eventually spared by Gojo, since he has questions for him. As Gojo starts to ask questions, Jogo is saved by Hanami. He is then brought to Dagon's domain, where Suguru explains they will have to deal with Gojo at another time and place. Even though Jogo lost against Gojo, he demonstrated amazing raw power, and his domain technique would likely have allowed him to defeat almost any other sorcerer trapped inside. Therefore, we consider him one of the strongest curses in the entire show. Number 2. Cursed Rika 
Rika Orimoto was just an ordinary girl at the very start of the manga, but things took an outrageous turn for her. Not only did she lose her appearance as a woman, but she also converted it into an ugly looking curse. Even after this drastic change in her whole appearance, one thing that remained constant was her love for Yuta. You can call her naive, but she is clear on whom she wants to protect. Rika is one of the essential characters in the manga. She, as the full-time partner of Yuta, plays a significant role in developing his personality. She saved Yuta's life on several occasions. When he tried to commit suicide, she came in his way and stopped him. Rika also played a vital role in defeating Ghetto. If she had fallen into Ghetto's hand, it would have been awful for the Jujutsu Sorcerers. Because, according to Ghetto, she was the Queen of Curses. On the 24th of December, to execute his plan and win the war, Ghetto invaded the college. His primary goal was to eliminate Yuta and get Rika on his side. And during their encounter, Yuta summons Rika and fights against Ghetto and the cursed spirits around them. Yuta asks Rika to grab his friend and escort them to a safer location, to which Rika readily agrees. Rika and Ghetto then face off with each other head to head. When Ghetto sees the immense display of power by Rika as she easily crushes and dismantles his cursed spirits, his desire to acquire Rika becomes even more significant. Ghetto then reduces the distance between them and converts the battle into close combat, in which he easily overpowers Rika. However, being in a close quarters fight made Ghetto reveal all his fighting styles in front of Yuta who then uses this revelation as an advantage and manages to push Ghetto into a corner. However, the fight doesn't end here, as Ghetto has one more trick up his sleeve. He then, to win, uses his maximum, Uzumaki technique to its limit, which is combining all 4,000 curses he has in his possession to do a one-hit attack. Yuta, at this point, gives up and thanks Rika for always protecting him, and then kisses her as a token of goodbye. However, this kiss excites Rika and breaks all of the curse limits on her. Rika then unlocked the true potential that enabled her to use a powerful blast which annihilated all Ghetto's cursed spirits, including Ghetto himself. There is no way that any of the previously mentioned curses would have even come close to defeating Rika, and that's why she definitely deserves a second place on our list. Number 1. Sukuna Ryomen Sukuna is a mighty cursed spirit, known as the undisputed king of curses. He is the strongest curse to ever walk the face of the earth. According to the legend, during the golden age of Jujutsu over a thousand years ago, Sukuna was an imaginary demon, though in truth, he was a human sorcerer, and other sorcerers gave their all to defeat him. After his death, he became a cursed spirit, and his curse was too strong for his body to be fully destroyed. Henceforth, his remains of twenty indestructible fingers, preserved in grave wax, traverse the ages as cursed objects, ever growing in power. One of Sukuna's fingers was kept in an outdoor thermometer box at Sugisawa High School. The school's occult club had taken the finger from the box and had tried to remove the seal placed on it. Once they had taken the seal of the finger off, other cursed spirits attacked the club members. As Yuji and Megumi came in to save the club members, Yuji eats the finger in order to fight off the cursed spirits, which resulted in Yuji sharing his body with Sukuna. Sukuna is selfish, cold-hearted, immortal, and exceptionally sadistic. Due to his immense power, he rarely cares about the consequences of his actions, even if these affect his host, Yuji Itadori. In fact, he frequently taunts and insults Yuji, calling him a brat and even laughing at or enjoying Yuji's despair on multiple occasions. Although Yuji is the perfect vessel for Sukuna's soul, Sukuna still manages to occasionally wrestle control from Yuji and take advantage of his freedom. As the most powerful cursed spirit in the entire series, Sukuna possesses vast amounts of cursed energy. His presence was felt throughout Shibuya once he was awakened. His cursed energy is similar to Satoru Gojo in its immensity, but different in its overwhelmingly evil nature. He soon went on to overwhelm and defeat Jogo, the most powerful cursed spirit in Ghetto's group. Even Gojo acknowledged Sukuna's strength, stating that fighting him would be tough. In every single appearance, Sukuna has proved that he is by far far the strongest cursed spirit ever. He seriously injured Mahito when angered, defeated Jogo without much trouble, and even managed to defeat Maharaga, something no user of the Ten Shadows technique and even a member of the Gojo family had done. His strength is so great that Mahito and Jogo were convinced that Sukuna's revival would ensure their success. Sukuna's strength is only rivaled by other special grades like Yuta and Gojo. Click on this video to see more content like this.